We have another major legal loss for former President Donald Trump. This one stings, and it certainly stings for a certain district court judge in Florida who really made a fool of herself pretty early in her career. Yes, a federal appeals court ruled yesterday that a judge's order appointing a special master to review documents seized from Trump's Mar-a-Lago home and club over the summer should be dismissed. The ruling made by a three-judge panel of the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals lifts earlier restrictions on the Justice Department's examination of classified documents and other records and allows investigators to proceed with the probe more quickly. We all were surprised by that decision. And now here we are. Insane decision. Uh, the panel stated that U.S. District Judge Aileen Cannon's order to appoint a special master and prevent the government from using the trove of documents <clears throat> that were retrieved with a search warrant from Mar-a-Lago on August 8th was incorrect. In September, Judge Cannon, a Trump appointee, selected Judge Raymond Deary to review the materials retrieved from Mar-a-Lago. We'll politely call him a skeptic. As after Trump's team argued it couldn't rely on the so-called filter team at the DOJ to set aside any privileged documents. In a separate order, the three-judge panel made up of two judges appointed by Trump and one appointed by former President George W. Bush stated its ruling will take effect in seven days, barring any intervention right. by the so, Supreme so Court. So Donald Trump could, could appeal, but but just a couple things, George. <laughs> and I, 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 as you know, I, I revere the rule of law. I... I I don't like <laughs> speaking ill of any federal judges because I'm not there. As you know, it's just like a jury. Try not to second-guess juries. Here, this was obvious from the beginning, the, from, from, from jurors, from, from legal scholars on the left and the right, that this woman was being a hack. She was being a political hack for Donald Trump. She was making a fool of herself. She had no basis in law for anything that she was doing. Right. And what a validation. The bigger story here is, once again, the rule of law holds in the United States of America. What a validation that you have the 11th Circuit, which is a very conservative circuit, but also no nonsense. Absolutely. And they, they, they shut her down again. The Supreme Court will as well. Hey, they, they, they doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't have a snowball chance in the Supreme Court. Yeah. And he's lost all his personal cases in the Supreme Court, essentially. Um, th this judge is an exception. That's the point that we need to remember. I mean, there's, there was a lot of suggestion that, oh, my gosh, it's going to go up to the conservative mm -hmm. 11th Circle with all these uh, Trump appointees. This, this decision never had a chance. I mean, it was a, it was a, based upon a, a legal complaint by Trump that even his own former attorney general, uh, Bill Barr, said was a crock of, I won't use the word, the New York yeah. Times did print it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and uh, you know, her decision was just even worse because it went even farther than, yeah. than, than Trump did. And, and what's great, I mean, you mentioned that the two, of the two of the Court of Appeals judges on this panel were appointed by Trump. The first one is a great judge from Alabama, from appointed by uh, George Bush, Judge George W. Bush, uh, Bill Pryor, who is actually one of the names that Trump floated during the 2016 campaign as yeah. the, from the list that he was going to choose from. And th this was just, and, and the opinion was just brutal. Oh, it's it was, it was just, it just eviscerated her, and basically said this, that you, we have three choices. One here is to do follow the law. The mm. second is to make a rule that basically says that every drug dealer um, <laughs> who, who gets who has stuff found in his basement um, can have uh, can delay master. things with a special master or special rule for ex presidents. And and that was so the end of it. So can Trump delay this though by appealing? Can no, he, no, no, because, no, because so what's the timeline moving forward? The time, well, the time Timeline is just is is going to be the timeline of the Justice Department. It's controlled right. by the Justice Department. In fact, it was already controlled by the Justice Department because Trump essentially already lost this case on a stay application by with three earlier judges uh, pri in, on a different panel than the 11th Circuit, also do uh, dominated by Republicans. Yeah. Um, he, you know, basically what what the restrictions that were placed on the on the Justice Department were already lifted. I, I, yeah, is, isn't it amazing, Elizabeth, that everything, uh, amazing to me, in my opinion, you uh, you just cut it any way you ought to. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but so many losses from Donald Trump legally have come from Republican everything. judges, Republican judges. Republican uh, supervisors of elections, Republican secretary of states, Republican governors, Republican. And I, I, I listen, I've got problems with my former party, so many problems okay. with my former party. I do think once in a while in the age of Twitter, we should draw a deep breath and say, wait a second. 
a very conservative Supreme Court has just said no to Trump time and time again. A ridiculously conservative, I won't say that, a very conservative 11th Circuit, no. Uh, the Secretary of State of Georgia will probably in the end be the person responsible for Donald Trump being indicted in the state of Georgia. There have been Republicans that have held the line for democracy, and we can't ever overlook that fact. I mean, but, but this this is just another loss for Trump on all fronts. I mean, we can go on and on about all the Republican candidate, the Senate candidate, the candidates that, of his who lost. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the uh, the investigations are heating up, especially the documents investigation at the Justice Department. Uh, there is, um, and then you know, so what? And all the Republican officials who are now denouncing him. Mm -hmm. uh, so he the his. Republican Party is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. We had a piece this morning by Peter Baker about how Trump's Republican Party is really shrinking to the far, far, far right extreme. Right. And there's a sense that the only way for him to get any kind of momentum going into 2023 and 2024 is to reach out to that, you know, intense, tiny, you know, um, uh, anti-Semitic, in many cases, minority. Look what happened right. last night. He sent a video to a fundraiser for the families of the defendants in January 6th. He sent a supportive right. video. He, this is th three or four days after Stuart Rose was convicted of sedition. Mm -hmm. um, so, he, you know, he is now in the most extreme corner of the Republican Party. Um, yeah. and, and so I don't see where this goes hmm. in and 2024. Michael, right, Michael Steele, you, you, you do look, he does continue to... to to shrink the party. And, and unfortunately for a, a lot of Republicans who want to start winning elections, um, and I'll put Newt Gingrich in that category. I don't know if you saw oh, Newt's, yeah. Newt's uh, 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 column yesterday, but um, he said Republicans keep making the same mistake. They keep underestimating Joe Biden. What Joe Biden's done with a, minor, with a small majority has been nothing short than, than, than awe-inspiring. He should be compared to Reagan and Eisenhower, and if they want to keep making fun of his memory or the way he walks or the way he talks, they can do that. Joe Biden will just keep beating them. And, and so you, you add to that Donald Trump's insanity, right. his association with Kanye, which oh my let's God. not even get started. Let's set going that on. aside. But there's more there. And the extremism of the Republicans that are taking over that. You know, if it's just backbenchers, right. you know, we can say for four years, we're not going to say... Marjorie Taylor Greene's name on this show. Why, right. why give right. back? The, well, it's just You're not the case to. anymore. When you look at the right. Judiciary Committee, still a tweet up praising Kanye West. Um, it's, they deleted it. They deleted it. Oh, did they delete night. that last Not night? Really. Oh, so it, after, 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 after he went on Nazi, tweeted that swastika. After he swastika. did and made those comments about Hitler. Yeah. So they finally, about, finally deleted, deleted it. Stop. After well. I took it them took all praise of Adolf Hitler for them to get to, to, yeah. to do this and a, and a swastika. So I think really we know where weird, that line is. Weird. Weird. So, yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's yeah. my takeaway on all of this at this point. Um, it's, it's, we've gone past Donald Trump. I think people kind of appreciate that now. This, this, Do you think the, that? Well, well let, me, let me explain how. Yeah. It's not, it's not, you know, the media and others still want to focus on the man and, you know, what he's trying to do or what he's trying to say. We're past that. I'm now looking at where the party leadership is trying to move itself. Mm -hmm. And the more telling thing for me was not the dinner that Donald Trump had with, uh, with uh, Fuentes and Kanye. It was the lack of response from political wannabes who want to be president. Right. Uh, the governor of Florida, which I, I still don't think he's put a statement out on that. Wow. Um, the leadership of the party with the sort of milk toast, oh, we don't like anti-Semitism, mm. <laughs> without saying that the, the anti-Semitic former president right. is the case to be made and it's against. Not fit. Right? And to draw that very bright line and say, this is not who we are, nor is it who we want to be. Right. I have not heard it, and you won't. For the very reasons you said, that that small fraction of the party still has political, financial, and other sway and control over the leadership. Yeah. Marjorie Taylor Greene will be the most powerful speaker uh, speaker of the House because she will have the opportunity to control what comes out of Kevin's mouth you're, around the things that matter to that small cadre. You're saying she's going to be speaker? 
I'm no, I'm saying she <laughs> she'll be the yeah. puppeteer. She will be the fact. I just call the thing what it is. Uh, so uh, I mean, you call it shadow. I call it the thing. It's the on. job <laughs> because right. you when you can't break that, make that separation. Yeah. When she is wow. in, you're dragging her to your events and you're propping up and right. you're telling her, not only we're going to put you I back in, in committee, I'm gonna we're going to give you a powerful commit, a leadership role. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna make on. a bumper sticker out of yeah. this and put it on my Prius. Uh, I just, does anybody here think I have a place? I just call the thing what it is. Uh, I like that. I just call the thing what, it is. Call the thing what, what it, it is. is. The All fact right. is. The, the fact, that's that's, it. that's what he meant. Exactly. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene has more Twitter followers, Facebook followers, a bigger social media following than any Republican in the House and probably the Senate. James Comer told us in an interview a few weeks ago that she was going to be an asset to his committee because of that reason. <laughs> and that's <laughs> of her Twitter being following? able to elevate their message of Man. what they're doing from an investigative perspective was going to be helpful for him no matter what. But this is exactly the game that Trump played all four years that other Republicans are now mimicking, condemning something just enough for people to sort of say, OK, he, he denounced it. Uh, and for that allows other Republicans to say right. the media is splitting hairs when you say it wasn't a forceful enough condemnation, uh, right. you know, and and that's what's happening right now with people like uh, Kevin McCarthy, who um, who, you know, you had his his allies trotted out uh, around shows all this past week, defending him, saying that that he denounced Trump forcefully. He didn't. Right. Uh, and that is a game that he is playing so that he can become Speaker of the House and get these remaining House Freedom Caucus votes. Uh, and it's the game that presidential candidates yes, in 2024 are going to continue to play uh, up until they're the, the nominee. It's